Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another live edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by my husband and producer and lovely button-pushing man, Mr. Chaos. Hello. Dr. Normal, whatever it is that we call you this evening. Uh, Dr. Normal, <laughs> Mr. Chaos, I answer to all. And our very special guest this week is Nate Angel, who's now going to pronounce his Twitter name for us. Well, Kent, does it even really need to be pronounced? I mean, come on. For, yes, it, it, for it my own sanity. It could be the unspoken. Sanity. It could be. Well, then we'll just call you the unspoken. Spell it. <laughs> spell Spell it. Okay, well, it, it's an Aztec word, and it's spelled X-O-L-O-T-L. Um, and you, the kind of you know, anglicized pronunciation would be something like holodal. So if you want to do the kind of gringo thing, you could be like holodal. Wow. But if you were you know, trying to be more authentic, it would be something more like holodal. Wow. I always want to call you Zotol. <laughs> Zotol is fine too, but isn't that a kind of gum? I don't know. No, that's Xylitol. That's I think not. my my brother's login name for stuff is Zythor, and it's XI, so I always put the Z for the X. Yeah. Gotcha. So I have one and only one tech question for you. That might start me off. Who knows? Mm -hmm. How are you an accidental open source evangelist? That is an excellent question, I think. Because I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I set up a profile anywhere, even on Plurk, <laughs> that was a sigh. We'll get to that later. <laughs> you know, when I'm reaching for that one sentence description, I, I usually use that accidental open source evangelist thing. Well, I guess I say accidental because I didn't set out to be that. You know, it's not like I had a dream as a small boy that, yes, one day I would become even an evangelist, much less an open source evangelist, right? Mm-hmm. So you just sort of fall into it backwards, mm -hmm. and that's the accidental part of it. Um, so what? So what do you what do you do as an open source evangelist? I mean, what? Uh, <laughs> like you were down at a conference last week, so yeah, it was actually more of a meeting, and it was very much open source evangelism. Um, I work for a company called R Smart, which is a actually the letter R Smart. It's an interesting name, founded by a man whose name starts with R which is mm. where I think the R comes from. At any rate, uh, they support open source technology for education. That's their business model. It's a little bit like um, if you know how Red Hat supports Linux, right? Anybody can go grab Linux, right? And you can maybe even install it on your computer and get it to work. But if you want to have somebody to call when your Linux isn't working, you can pay Red Hat and they will help you out, right? Mm -hmm. So we, uh, our smart has the same model. Um, we support a, a select group of open source applications for higher ed, mostly universities, but also K-12 and some government stuff. And you can get the software for free, but if you want to call somebody and get help, you can call us. Mm. Is this is this the, um, are you supporting the, just the OS and the kernel, or are you in no, the application space? Yeah, or? we're actually in the, applic we're several layers up in the stack there. Um, we right now support two applications. Um, I would say primarily, but really only. And those are one for online learning, which is called Sakai. And it's an online learning environment, a little bit like if you've ever taken a class online or a class that had online elements and maybe used like WebCT or Blackboard or Desire to Learn or Angel. No affiliation with me. <laughs> <laughs> one of these kinds of systems. Um, Sakai is a open source version of that that was built by universities for universities. Um, and so we didn't make it ourselves, although we've contributed to it a lot. But uh, we support that a lot like Red Hat didn't make Linux, but they support it, right? Um, so there's Sakai, the online learning environment, and then there's a new thing called Kuali. I don't know where they come up with these names, but they have to find one where the domain isn't taken, right? Uh, you're talking about Red Hat. What, what is the platform? like? So I'm playing with little, little K. I had an old computer, and so I said, what the heck? Ooh, I'm going to set up a, an old computer, and, and I set up the educational Ubuntu. And she loves right. it. Actually, right. it's a very nice package, right, for her to learn on. Are totally. you? Are you? Is it Red Hat based, or is it? 
Um, I mean, it's really more of a server application that an I institution okay. would deploy, right? So it's not the kind of thing that Kay is going to have gotcha. on her laptop. Now, she might participate in a class right. that an institution was giving, but she would just participate through a regular web browser. Gotcha. So, so it's all, all back-end server space, yeah. access through a browser. Yeah. And, of course, it, it probably runs best on an open-source stack, you know, like a, a Linux. Um, it's a Java Mm -hmm. Java-based application, so you know a Linux Tomcat Apache environment, but you can run it in other environments. It works with IBM environments. It could work with Sun environments and, and things like that. So, what do you see out there from your customers? I mean, are they still mostly accessing through maybe Windows and and Mac OS boxes or? on the client side? Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, at, at the universities, you know, when it, you've got the students and the faculty, and they're pretty different. The faculty are usually a little bit older and have a tendency probably to be more on the Windows side. But I think, you know, because of the iPod mostly, the students are really drifting toward Macs now. Um, I don't have any statistics, but you just walk around a campus and it's the same thing as when you walk around like a developer conference. You know, over half the computers are now Macs. Mm -hmm. And I think for with students, it's mostly the cool factor, but it's also the ease of use factor. Um, so you don't see as much Linux. Well, in Oregon you know. too, the uh, the or in Portland at least, the Portland public school system uses apples exclusively at school. So most of the children, especially if they don't have a computer at home, are learning all of their computer classes in school are on on Macs. Yeah, in the K twelve space, Apple's long been a big player mm -hmm. in K twelve, and so yeah, a lot of schools are maybe exclusively Mac, mm -hmm. um, even though it traditionally was a little bit more expensive. Although Apple cut some nice deals. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, we we we're basically selling to the big the big universities. Over a hundred universities around the world actually now um, contribute uh, monetarily and with developers to Sakai, for instance. Um, it's used at uh, institutions like Berkeley, Cambridge, University of Michigan, um, Stanford. You know, so some of the most elite institutions in the world are using Sakai as their online learning platform. So it's. It's what it's actually a little bit more than open source, even though the source is open. It's what we call community source, which is where a community of, of sort of like-minded institutions has said, why should we each pay some proprietary commercial enterprise separately for something that we all need? Let's just band together and put all our money together and build it ourselves and then share it with other people. So it's like an online commune. Yeah. It, and. <laughs> Interesting you should say that, <laughs> because going back to why I'm an accidental open source evangelist, I think because of my communist past, the, <laughs> the open source part of it kind of appeals to me. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm not, you know, the uh, a Windows evangelist. I see. Because <laughs> there's not really a communist Microsoft link, I don't think. I haven't, I haven't noticed one. Have you? No. Uh, not not in recent history or memory, no. <laughs> <laughs> but they were well, you know, they were driven, and and they just made a really bad technology choice in the beginning, and they paid for it ever since. Right. <laughs> Sorry, right. <laughs> that was my anti MS DOS screed. Okay, the laptop. <laughs> Am I dissing your laptop? Yes, we Sorry. should we should note that Cami Chaos is currently running. Windows Vista. No one, oh my God, no one on the planet laptop. except for me can handle Vista. Yeah. I have no issues with Vista. Vista has never given me a hard time. That's interesting. You should become a Microsoft Vista evangelist accidentally. No, no but here's the thing. <laughs> Just because I can use it doesn't mean I want to... Foist it on everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to. Like other things <laughs> I'll like force on people like uh, Toonlit. For I fell in love with Toonlit. I mean, it's not a practical application for your everyday life, but I fell in love with Toonlit, and now I have people emailing me or calling me daily, even in my family, going, Cammy, how does this work? How do I do the two columns? How do I do this? How I say do you do be that? careful there. I disagree with you. I respectfully disagree. I think uh, Toonlit is a practical communication method. I think in five or ten years, we'll all be speaking purely in bubbles and Toonlits, right? You know. Well, it, it solves the whole Double problem of language. Right, I mean, then we don't even need like you could talk to someone who doesn't speak English. Well, if yeah. you know, if uh, I'll I'll kind of uh, uh, promote uh, our, our previous tech podcast with with Craig Schwartz of Tunelit, who said he was actually surprised 
at how people are using Toonlit because he said there were there were people who actually went up to Toonlit and started having these deep philosophy conversations mm-hmm. like in the comment in actual yeah. you know studies of philosophy in Toonlit. Well, sure. There's, I mean, there's comic books already that, um, you know, interpret, um, you know, like Marx's Communist Manifesto or something. Mm-hmm. And so, why not in Tunlet as well? There you go. That would be fun. Not to bring it all back to communism again. I'm sorry. It's okay. You can this be isn't communist. the com- is this the communist section? Oh no, oh. it's the tech section. No, okay. it's okay. Yeah. Communists tech. It's okay. Am I going to get in trouble for being communist? No, that's over, right? Okay. Yeah. We'll hide you for you know a <laughs> oh, few can I more stay months. Here? Yeah. Yeah. A few months, we'll hide you. Keep you Children. safe. Stay asleep. Don't wake up. So, um, <clears throat> so while you were away, um, we went to uh, Vidoop to uh, what was that thing? Lunch two point one service pack three. What was that called? <laughs> um, Are you mocking? Are or was you it mocking? named after a cat? It hmm? was lunch cheetah. Yeah. It was lunch two point oh at Vidoop or right. Vidoop Loop for Miss Burroughs. Have you have you been to these lunch two point I have been to one. I went to the. Um, in the same building as Vadoop, the E. Roy uh-huh. uh, Lunch 2.0, and saw many of the same characters. And uh, I heard that the Vadoop one, though, was really stellar in terms of the food. I heard there was bacon wrapped bacon something. Bacon wrapped dates stuffed with blue cheese. That's right. <sighs> if I hadn't eaten dinner already. Mm. So, yeah, so I mean, you know, there's all this, all these things going on in, in Portland. Uh, Vadoop, Open ID, and all that. I mean, it, it, you seem pretty well connected. With these uh, types of things, um, pretty. I mean, I've gotten uh, up until tell us about that. Up until last November, I actually worked at Portland State University. I was director for web communications, yeah. which was a vaulted position. Vaunted, vaulted. Mm. I don't know. I'm sure Miss Burroughs will chime in soon with the correction there. <clears throat> but uh, I wasn't as well connected back then, frankly. I mean, I was connected mm-hmm. to some open source communities out in the world, like the Sakai one that I've been talking about, or I've had a lot a long connection with Drupal, which is a a web right. content management system. But you've been doing a lot of work with that. Yeah, we use it. We actually use it at RSmart as well for our website. And, mm-hmm. and it's, a, it's a nifty platform if you're in the PHP MySQL space. But um, <clears throat> uh, I got on Twitter when I changed jobs, partially in order to just have some people to talk to during the day because my company is actually located in Phoenix. RSmart's headquarters are in Phoenix, mm-hmm. and I'm here all by myself. And I just started to meet people on Twitter. And the next thing you know, I've got like 150 new friends, some of whose names I don't even know. Yeah. Like Dr. Normal. That's right. So uh, so you actually don't have an office then? I do not have an office. You are a, a, a nomad worker. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a nomad 2.0, they call us. So you just, so you just have your laptop, you're just kind of like walking down Burnside looking for a hot spot. To go work <laughs> or a Wi-Fi node. Yeah, there we go. Because hotspot could be like a Sasha B kind of thing. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Or it could be biological Good outbreak. Point. But anyway, um, or both. Or if you oh, watch look, Doctor I Who, I found great Wi-Fi and Ebola right over here. If you here. watch Doctor Who, it could also be the point where they go to charge the TARDIS. Oh, they charge that. Yeah, the TARDIS has to be charged I occasionally. I didn't even thought about that. <laughs> oh my I didn't even God, I am just new. surrounded by idiots. I s- assumed it was like some. Infinite. Generating. Yeah. No, they they set it on a rift, and all the energy comes out of. Uh, never mind. Did Tom Baker have to charge his? I don't know, but David Tennant did, and that's uh, kind of what Tennant, matters. David Tennant. We can pursue this because this is the tech section. Yeah, that's, it is, and this oh, is tech. Gosh. <laughs> we don't need to talk about David Tennant <laughs> tech or anything else about David Tennant and Doctor Who. I'm talking Even though about I wore my David Tennant glasses tonight. Yeah, I don't know how I convinced you to get those. Okay. They look very nice on no, you. No, they do. They, they, they make you look a little bit distinguished, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is nice, so especially speaking, when your back's turned to the camera. Speaking of the TARDIS, where do you work exactly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nowhere. Uh, give me, yeah, give me an example of your... You know, I, I basically move around. Well, I actually end up spending a lot of time on the Portland State campus still because mm-hmm. um, my youngest daughter actually still goes to the um, preschool they have. And so mm-hmm. I go there in the morning to drop her off, and then I'm there. And mm-hmm. they have a hot spot, and, you know, that one thing leads to another. It's a great campus. Yeah, it's a nice place to be, and I know people there and whatever. But I'm trying to wean myself off that. So I, I have been hanging out at places like uh, the Opposable Thumb on Belmont and 30, like 33rd. Mm-hmm. I sometimes hang out in the Pearl at places like 
sipping crayons if I want to have a preschool environment around me while I'm working. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> or a backspace if I want all the Twitter people to be live instead of on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, there. Because that's go. where they all hang out. Yeah, know? I noticed you're you're you seem to be working a lot at Backspace or Yeah, a couple of times. Well actually that's how I ended up getting in that Twitter article in the Oregonian because I happened uh, to be at Backspace. I didn't I didn't mm-hmm. know. Yep. But I was in Backspace and then Rick shows up with uh, you know, the Oregonian reporter and the next thing you know, it's a free for all. Yeah. You know now what about that? This is, all of a sudden we've got this spread in old media about Twitter. They found How'd it very go? entertaining. <laughs> Did you bring the article? I asked you to bring the. You know what? I still don't have a hard copy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, the longer the you the wait newspaper. to get the article, the harder it's going to be to find oh, it. I I swear I have someone who says they have it and mm. they're going to bring it to me. I hope so. If they don't use it to wrap up day old fish or something. <laughs> but you know, another thing I was going to say while we're still in the tech section is um, before I moved over to R Smart, one thing that I was working on at Portland State is. Um, trying to create a statewide center for open source technology. Mm-hmm. Um, the state actually funds these things they call signature research centers. And this is something Scott Kabeaton was working on, too. Uh, he used to be the a university OSL, guy. Right, yeah. the open source labs. Open source labs at, um, at Oregon State. Mm-hmm. And so we had similar kinds of jobs, although his was way cooler um, even back then. But um, <clears throat> So the state has funded a couple of these signature research centers, one in nanotechnology, already and then they just funded one in green building technology which is cool i mean those, that's cool that stuff is very cool. but um the open source one lost out to the green building one we tried to put that together because uh the silicon forest here really is a hotbed of open source work and technology um uh, you know i mean Lin- linus torvalds was here you know for one thing was here or still is well here? you know does anybody he's supposedly still here but it's not like i see speaking him of who's batman yeah, exactly. Have you ever seen him in the same room with Batman? No, or? I don't think so. And he's you know he's got all the cool toys. Oh, yeah. But at any rate, so you know that's one of the more interesting things about Oregon is it's not just technology, but it's actually very much focused and centered on open source technology. And even a company like Jive, right, mm-hmm. is they're open they're essentially an open source company because that's how they treat their product. Well, it's a tier, you know, from my experience, it's a now a tier 1 operating system. Right. Although, did you see that um, article, I believe it was in the New York Times, uh, just in the last couple of days, about how um, a university researcher had, or a team obviously had, um, used E. coli bacteria DNA to to attack a very complex, insol- or heretofore insoluble math problem. Or maybe it's soluble. Safe. Solvable. 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 Solvable is like when you can dissolve mm-hmm. it in water, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> um, it's it's the question of the burnt pancake flipping algorithm or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And so they programmed this um, this E. coli bacteria to try right. to solve the problem in a, like a massively parallel computing model. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know they're basically just like growing a bunch of bugs, and and then eventually it figures out the problem, which was it was an interesting. <laughs> yeah, I read an article about that. So several years ago, one one of the guys, I can't remember which one, but RSA, the encryption guys, right, right. each one of those letters stands for one, one of, of the, the guys PhDs who started right, RSA. Right. I can't remember which one, and I can't the remember R, his name. The R, the SBA. Right. Yeah. And he, that was actually his next thing that he left RSA, and he was studying DNA because essentially you have instantaneous um, uh, chemical pairs that can be made. Very, very quickly. And they self-replicate. Exactly. Right. And they're very strong, too, actually. So they don't, like, fall apart. On the chemical, like, bond level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a biology or chemistry person, so... It and sounds cool, though. It's only, like, four. ATGC. Cool. Maybe we can uh, use it to solve the burnt pancake algorithm. There we go. Now, that I have no idea what the burnt pancake algorithm I just learned that the other day, which, which actually pertains to the, one of the questions that we may get into later that I sent you. Oh, I wonder if it's about. I wonder if it's the 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 idea that you have the right heat. It's the how, no, no. You're how overthinking quick. it. Okay, you're overthinking it already. I can tell. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so, what do you think? So, open source, desktop Linux. You know, there was a long time when I wasn't really a believer that it could happen, but I'm starting to come around. You know, I think Ubuntu really started to shift my thinking on it. Like you were saying that you were making that for it's your great. daughter. It really. It's gotten pretty, really good. It, it, it like it kind of rocks right out of the box. Um, it does a lot of cool stuff. Well, it, it, much better uh, eye candy 
yeah now which really gives really Mac and, and yeah. all those environments a run for their money and if you want to and if you want to get under the hood you can totally get under the hood too and so it's like I mean it's the best of both worlds really mm-hmm. and and you can run it on old antiquated hardware so yeah and especially when it comes to you know people making smaller or less power consuming things or using you know the green stuff using older stuff reusing it makes a lot of sense so I'm mm-hmm. I'm starting to become a believer. I, for a long time, I was like, it's really a server technology, but I'm, I'm right. coming around. Unless you're a super geek, for the super geeks, it was always great. But now it's like your daughter. You know? And you and and not the, that she's not a super geek. I don't want to insult anybody. No, it's okay. And and and, and I got to say, I am so. I mean, I, I do come out of the Microsoft Windows world, but I I have a very open mind about about um, um, technology, or try to have an open mind. Um, We'll talk about Plurk later um, <laughs> in you. social networking. But I don't know anyway, how it's about the technology so much. But, uh, yeah. um, but the cool thing is you can find a distro for anything. Um, for example, I had a Linksys router, and it, it just kind of crapped out. And so I kind of updated the um, – I think it's, I think they, they were running VxWorks or one of the embedded operating systems, and that really didn't help. And then I found that there was a distro for it. So if you have a Linux router, actually, uh, Linksys router, they support tons and tons of, huh. of hardware out right. there. Look for, I think it's DD-WRT huh. distro. And there's a distro for every single one. Oh, my God. I had That's to actually step through uh, a bootloader process because there wasn't enough RAM in that model of the router to just wipe out the OS. So you have to do right. a stub bootloader and then right but i you know you read the wiki right you just go do it well and it and it works and and i've been running this thing it's so stable it um they opened up all the features right so there's like a broadcom communications processor in there and 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 that you can actually you know you can change the transmit and receive power and right all sorts of wonderful things (laughs) stuff that you didn't even know you wanted to do 100 percent stable right so in fact i I don't think they've updated the version version and um and the other one that I really like is my parents gave me their 300 megahertz um, Pentium 2. They're like, yeah, we're done with this now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> We've been done with it for a while. Can you donate this or do something right. with it? And I'm like, sure. And uh, it had like Windows 98 on it. So I just the, went the off. La- the last stable version of Windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. S-E. It's okay. Um, I'm not going to debate that. Um, and, and so... Uh, uh, so something I did with that is um, I actually gave it a shot to see if it, something like Ubuntu would run. It, it wouldn't. Right. But then I went out and got DSL Linux. Damn small Linux. Oh, I don't know <laughs> It will one. run on anything. Is that the one that they run on the little matchbox size Linux server? <laughs> That's like it's literally in a matchbox. Yeah, box. probably. Yeah. Probably. I mean, yeah. it's a really tight, small kernel. It still has a, a X Windows interface. I'm not sure what. It's KDE or GNOME or whatever right. it is. Right. It might just be kind of a generic... It's got a browser in it, right? And it's 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 actually meant to run on any type of PC hardware, like from the Stone Ages. So if you've right. got like an old Pentium or a Pentium Two, or right. you know, I don't know if it'll run. I think I think they'd even run like three eighty sixes or wow. something like that. <laughs> you know, and you can just and everyone's got one in their garage. Yeah, exactly. Or somewhere. So Wait, I mean, there's one over there now. It's great, you know. Yeah, I'd love to see that. And I mean, the other thing you brought up about open source stuff is. You read the wiki, and and if you don't read the wiki, you can go in the IRC channel. I mean, the the, the amount of um, you know, minds that are helping. You know, the documentation isn't always great, right? But let's face that it, that is true. But the documentation for proprietary software is not always great either. Okay, so let's let's just interrupt there. Okay. Linux developers, get on the documentation. Well, okay, that Come can on, be guys. said about any any open source thing. But at the same yeah. time, the information exists somewhere. Yeah. If you can't find it already written down, you can often find the person who wrote it, who wrote the program, and right. they will talk to you on IRC, which is crazy. I mean, try to do that with, you know, a proprietary app. Is there a lot of that? There's not a lot of that on Twitter. You find a lot of that on Twitter? Because it seems like Twitter would be a great platform for just kind of little tech exchange or something. Do we have Dompy Dompy in the audience still? Uh, he was in the room. He was there earlier. You know, because that reminds me of him. Because uh, I see him. He's, he's the man who who basically thinks Twitter is just um, IRC for dummies. 
<laughs> which is sort of true in a way. Yeah. But, you know, all that tech talk always happens in an in internet relay chat. And Twitter is sort of like the easier version of that. And I think um, there is there's I there are people that I that I follow or follow me that we've had, you know, more technical discussions like that. Um, but it's I haven't seen it to the degree. I think there's that social aspect in Twitter that that is also an IRC, but Twitter is sort of more, you know, a higher percentage of that social aspect. But mm-hmm. not nearly as social as like Facebook or something. That's <laughs> or, what I. You know like what though? I think Facebook goes so social that it's no longer social. It's just like mindless. Yeah. To, to, Plus, to, you, you're spending your whole time trying to figure out what to click on, or mm-hmm. at least I do. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm yeah. like so staring like, at the interface. Like it's I log fun. in. Somebody says, "Oh, you got to go try this out." <laughs> so I get the login. Right. I log in. You give it your I credentials. Click around, yeah. <laughs> I click around for two minutes, and I'm like, "Get the heck! I can't." Uh, t- you know, I'm in my 40s. I, right. I don't have time for this. <laughs> exactly. you know? I don't think it's that social. I don't think it's necessarily because that with Twitter, it's more, it's almost organic human contact. I mean, granted, you're not in the room with someone unless you're at Backspace, but you have <laughs> constant contact with people and it be kind of creates well, a relationship. Fr- on Facebook, you're sending people kittens and gnomes and Oh, God. And, and writing on their wall. And writing on their wall, and there's What's no contact. What's that about? There's it's no, like an ancient Roman thing. Yeah, yeah. There's no real contact on Facebook. There's Someone writes on our you know, walls here in the neighborhood. We you know, call the neighborhood watch officer and get the stuff to take the graffiti off. What's yeah. up with that? There should be a neighborhood watch Again, app. in my Facebook. 40s. Yeah. I'm a cranky yeah, yeah, really. You. Wipe down You're going to be shaking your fists exactly. at the speeder You soon. damn yeah. kids on Facebook. Um, no, it is. I mean, let's face it. Facebook is social, but I think Cammy's onto something. There's, for me, and this is what I was talking about in the Oregonian article, too, is there's something about Twitter. It's it's almost exactly like real face-to-face social interaction. And I, and I take back the like real. It's like real life. I take back the real because it is real, right? Twitter yeah. is real. There's nothing fake about it. Like I have. <laughs>